Today we're going to be talking about star bases, those giant structures that sit in the middle of the system and could be potentially a giant stumble block for you to overcome. Now, star bases are not what they seem. It's very important to note here that star bases have some very weird quirks, and it may not be as obvious to actually see how they're built and what you should be building when it comes to their layout. Let's dive right in into star bases and see how they function. So star bases in general come in five different flavors and five different classes, which are ironically labeled class 0 to 4. At its base, we have, of course, the outpost. The outpost is very straightforward. It costs 75 influence per station, gets a single missile turret on it. Yes, it does have a single weapon system on it that you can use to defend any sort of space. And this basically means that any fleet attacking an outpost usually needs a little bit of point defense on their fleets to be able to defend themselves versus the weapon systems on said outpost. Now by itself, it's not really all that dangerous that comes in at level one, but by itself, it's still an interesting thing to think about because it has a reasonable amount of firepower that can be a reasonable stumble block for any early fleet to come in. And then we get to the tier two station, the starport there it is it's uh it's kind of nice you know it gets uh two additional modules and um well here is when we start to run into weird stuff weird things indeed we've got gun batteries missile batteries and hangar bays what do these actually do well if we read the game code what it actually does is that it will prioritize its weapon systems and by prioritize i mean the single missile slot will be overridden with whatever you put in there so for instance you could put a gun battery in there or and then it will shoot guns you can put a missile battery in there and then the missile launcher will shoot more advanced missiles you can put a hangar bay in there and it will crap out the joys that is strike craft so the real question is which of these is optimal this is a very weird question to ask yourself because the starport itself does come with two medium slots that will either use lasers or uh, kinetic weapons. And that right there is kind of weird. Personally, uh, I personally like to go for the hangar bay. Why the hangar bay specifically? Well, the hangar bay itself, it adds additional protection uh, to your trade, overriding any sort of pirates that are nearby. In this particular case, it adds a trade protection range of plus one. It does that as well for the gun battery as well as the missile battery, but the hangar bay gives you an additional plus five trade protection, making sure that those annoying pirates will never be a thing again. On top of that, you get a single building slot that you can use for anything. If you're on the front line, I highly recommend the communications jammer as it um, reduces enemy sublight speed by 20%, which means that you can engage them uh, in a longer range, which is always nice. It, ta it takes time for them to slow boat into range. In addition, you can take the targeting uplink computer, which is, in fact, a rare technology. And uh, it gives your weapons an additional range of 50%. Uh, it does say ship weapon range modifier, but I'm pretty sure, and this is kind of weird because it's not really specified anywhere if it actually applies to the weapons on the station itself uh, an additional range of 50 percent so those uh, strike craft and uh, lasers or kinetic weapons will shoot at a longer distance so yeah the uh, the starport it's uh it's rather nice to have specifically because well the upgrade cost of 200 alloys I'm, I'm a little bit late later into the game so the costs are a little bit reduced is really nice to have on say a choke note system the problem with star bases especially at the early game is that they are significantly stronger than fleets and you definitely want to engage the enemy on a star base uh, in general uh star bases really suffer from the D, D trope of linear fighter quadratic wizard what do i mean by that i mean that the strength of a star base goes up linearly whereas fleets will go up quadratically at the late game fleets will be so much more powerful than a star base than having a star base being kitted out by nothing but guns um is not really all that useful which is why i like to go for the hangar base the hangar base are definitely in my personal opinion 
the way to go with star bases. Then we have the third tier, the Star Hold. The Star Hold itself is, uh, is rather nice as well, an upgrade cost of base 500 alloys. and adds an additional two medium guns on top of it and is, once again, more powerful than the Starport. It's uh, rather good in the uh, late early game, but after this point, the Star Bases do not really become much of a hassle. Unless, of course, you're fighting a Starport or Star Base that, from, uh, that is from built by a fallen empire or you kit it out with a ridiculous amount of of batteries well we'll get into those once we get to the citadel but yeah two additional module slots you can even put even more hangar bays on there if you want uh what happens here is is now you have even more trade protection range which means that any station or any system that is four out in any direction of this here uh, star four base uh, will have additional trade protection against pirates, which by itself is rather good. You get an additional building slot, you can put something cool on there, say the communications jammer once again, if you've went for the uplink computer before, or the disruption field generator, which reduces enemy shields by 20%. But yeah, I, again, at this point in the game, once you have this type of starbase, the star hold, any sort of fleet will be able to knock these down relatively quickly. Once again, the quadratic uh, wizard versus the linear fighter. The star bases stop being good after this point. Then we get to the joys that is the Star Fortress. The Star Fortress unlocks all modules and uh, yeah, once again... Hangar base, in my personal opinion, way to go. And this pretty much maxes out its potential when it comes to area of control. There are very, very limited situations where I feel that you want to upgrade it to a citadel. Even the, the cost of 1250 base uh, for the Star Fortress when it comes to alloys is already a really sketchy thing to do. Like In the, mid, in the late mid-game, you probably want to go through all of your stations and basically take a look, hey, what is the protection range of all my stuff? Because at this point, star bases are pretty much giant targeters that are, you know, target painters or target reticles that uh, your ships can annihilate. And at this point in the game... Derrida is going to get annihilated by any fleet trying to get nearby. They'll knock out a couple of corvettes, but any battleships will be to be able to take him out at range. In addition, of course, you get an additional building slot, which is nice because you can put some specialist stuff on there like a black hole observatory or, of course, uh, like a fleet academy if you're doing something along the lines of a shipyard build, which... Uh, you know, if you want to crap out stuff really quickly when it comes to your ships, totally doable. So that's nice. But yeah, overall, I, I, I feel after this, the it's, it's not all that good unless you want to build Titans or Colossi. Then we get to the grand daddy of them all, the Citadel. The Citadel is, of course, the most expensive Star Fortress that you can build with a cost, a base cost of, for an upgrade of 3,500 alloys. That is absolutely insane. Now it doubles in strength from the Star Fortress from before. It gets additional platforms and now has 12 medium guns. Yes, just medium guns. And uh, you can now build... Titans and Colossi on them. That's pretty much it because you get one more building slot. The thing with these things is, is that they, unless you're going to go for Colossi or Titans, there is really no reason to build a Citadel. It's a huge sunken cost issue, pumping even more alloys into a thing that can be destroyed relatively easily and can be backed up by the significantly cheaper Star Fortress um, in a much better way. I, I don't really see a good reason to build a Citadel unless you want to build Titans, and I usually don't build them to begin with. However, there are situations where they could potentially be useful. Why? Because at this point in the game, your Starbase will have the FTL inhibitor uh, ability. What does that mean? It means that any sort of fleet that tries to come into your system cannot leave unless they go into the other direction. But of course, once they take the system, the uh, FTL inhibitor uh, will go into your, their hands, which means that you'll have the same problem. Now, at this point, you can add ridiculous amounts of defense platforms. What are defense platforms, you ask? Well, defense platforms, of course, are these little units of buildings that you can add to your star bases and put them completely 
filled up to the brim with guns. Let's take a quick look here at our ship designer and see what we have. In this particular case, we have the phase variant. So this is just a ton of small phase disruptors that uh, will pretty much, uh, you know, attack an enemy fleet's hull for maximum damage. If they get into range, that is, because in this particular case, having the targeting of Klim computer is going to be rather helpful because it increases the range of these gun platforms by 30 because the face disruptor of course doesn't have a lot of range of course we have different variants as well we can put for instance the heavy version on that and just put neutron launchers on there make them engage from across the system that is really nice however we can also do something else and that is of course build the joys of the ion cannon now the ion cannon of course uh is rather interesting because at this stage you can you can put a maximum of about five of them on stations and they'll engage anything in the system. Now, what you want to keep in mind here is that you don't want to have a targeting uplink computer on your station if you have five ion cannons on set station because the ion cannons will, of course, attack any enemy in stations so, uh, in system. So this becomes a completely wasted slot. So use something else on there like a uh, command center, which increases fire rate of any ship within range of the station. Yeah, don't put targeting uplink computers in there if you have only ion cannons on your station. Now, you may have noticed that we've got quite a lot of slots on this station when it comes to defense platforms. Like, we can put 40 of these bad boys on here. How did we get to this many? Well, thank you for asking, because we are currently running with Eternal Vigilance. Eternal Vigilance is an Ascension perk that adds five additional defense platforms to your stations. This in combination with the Defense Grid Supercomputer, which adds an additional eight, uh, gives, uh, gives a quite nice a little bonus. However, the real meat and potatoes comes from something else, and that is, of course, the joy that is the Strategic Coordination Center. The Strategic Coordination Center, when it's maxed out, adds a total of 12 additional defense platforms on your stations which maxes it out of course at a total of 40. now a single defense platform will only use one of these here slots a uh, ion cannon will take eight in total which is where that max of five comes out now at this point uh, do you really want to use a citadel and have eight ion cannons, uh, five ion cannons on it? Not really. Sure, they'll knock out any enemy ships coming into the system, especially battleships, with their insane accuracy, and they'll just blast away pretty much anything trying to come in. So it becomes a huge issue for the enemy when it comes to you know, trying to take one of these. The real problem is, is cost. An ion cannon is extremely expensive. T-1000 alloys is not something to blink at, and they will get destroyed really easily by late game fleets. Should you ever build a citadel? No. No, you shouldn't. You really should not unless you're building a Colossus or a Titan somewhere. Maybe somewhere in the middle of your empire would be a good idea, but overall, not really. In addition, you could, for instance, build a single uh, single system somewhere, have a citadel on there or a star fortress completely maxed out with all the joys of the of the strike craft and strategically place gateways all over the place as well as the uh, lo on the location where that uh, single uh, single station is because it will spread all of its range everywhere. That means that you will only need one station to, to suppress pirates in general, because gateways are awesome. A, a variation of this, of course, is the wormhole. If you've got a wormhole in your space somewhere, it's rather useful to have a, a, a station on top of it because uh, it will project its protection range through that wormhole, like it does with gateways. But yeah, stations in general, should you use them? Yes, at the start of the game, absolutely. Fight on top of them with your fleets against enemy fleets. Always make sure that you engage, let the enemy engage your station first, and then jump on top of them with your fleet. But at the late game, stations become so underpowered, especially considering they only have medium slots, which makes absolutely zero sense to me in the current version of the game, because these things are so huge, they should have XL weapons on them. Because, you know, mass drivers and Mac cannons. 
you ever played Halo, you know what I'm talking about here. It's shooting a 150-ton projectile at 6% of the speed of light to an enemy should instantly annihilate them. Still, though, the application of the linear fighter quadratic wizard still applies in this scenario. Stations in the late game are not good for anything unless it comes to suppressing pirates or building high-end ships. It's not worth it. Put those minerals in the ships because you're going to need them. Moving a fleet around is so much more effective than a single strategic target that can be annihilated by an enemy fleet that just sits around the corner waiting to jump on them. And if they manage to take a station, they will get more war score. They'll get a place to refit their ships. And that right there is a problem. You want to make really damn sure that you put a single station in a strategic location and then work from there on out. Sure, you can put a station somewhere behind your line and use it as an area to refit your ships or to, uh, you know, restock and heal your stuff, etc. You still need them for uh, getting trade value out of places and build ships. But still, overall... When it comes uh, it comes to using stations as a defensive perimeter, I actually don't think they're all that great. So yeah, there you have it. Stations, they are curious. They are definitely fascinating. You shouldn't build them too many of them though, because they're just not worth their value in our so we're going to wrap this one up here. If you have an opinion about stations, and if you feel that I am in fact completely wrong about them, I want to see your comment below here. Like, I have a discussion about this. I'm really looking forward to it. But in the meantime, we're going to go wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take good care of yourselves and as always, each other.